To know me is to know that I am insanely passionate about sales, sales training, and leadership training. Now, most of my videos have a very positive connotation, and this one will too at the very end, but I wanna focus specifically today on two things that you might be saying as part of your sales process that are actually not only hurting your sale now, but also ruining any opportunity for future business with this client. Whenever I do sales training and I either roam the hallway or have an opportunity to listen to recorded calls, which is more common these days in the COVID environment where so many offices are closed, now I'm listening to a lot of recorded calls, uh, whether it's an open call where we're first identifying ourselves and the opportunity we're pitching, or on a closing call where we're trying to bring it all home. And these two statements are as follows. The first one is, what is it that you have to think about? <laughs> You're probably cringing a little bit as you're hearing that. And the second one is, well, when we first started talking, you said that. Now, usually it's something that the client said during qualifying where you ask them questions about timing or need and so on and so on. So let's tackle both of those and we're gonna keep this video very brief today. And uh, we'll start with, what is it that you have to think about? What you might not realize when you ask that question is that if a person tells you, let me think about it, which I understand is a really tough thing to hear, but what that really means is, I don't like your product. It could also mean I don't like you, uh, but what it really means is you didn't do a good enough job selling me on something. So instead of hearing the words, I have to think about it, try and trick your mind to hearing these words instead. You didn't show me what I came here to see today. And as a result of that, I don't feel comfortable enough telling those words to your face because we don't have rapport or a relationship. So I'm going to choose the easy route and tell you something like, let me think about it. Now, two people don't realize two things. What the client doesn't realize is, let me think about it, is leading the salesperson on and the salesperson is just going to continue calling them day after day, week after week, until they come up with some sort of real solution, which will most likely be a no. What the salesperson doesn't realize is that let me think about it is actually a no. So if you can shift the way that you think about that statement, and it's, again, like I said, try and listen to the words, you didn't do a good enough job selling me today, or I'm not comfortable with what I'm seeing today. Then when you hear, let me think about it, you can respond with, it sounds like I didn't do a good enough job showing you what it is that you needed to see today, because now we're addressing the real concern. So we have a problem and we have a bad way of addressing it, which is what do you have to think about? And we have a better way of addressing it, which is sounds like I didn't do what I needed to do today. And at least when you take ownership, you're opening up the conversation for a more honest approach. People love honesty. Honesty is always the best solution. Don't hear, let me think about it. Here, you didn't make a sale. The next thing that people are doing that really irks me, and this one's really hurting not only your sale today, but future sale opportunities as well, is the statement, well, when we first started talking, you told me that. So usually when you're qualifying somebody in the beginning of a call or a discovery call or whatever pitch that you're on, more often than not, you're asking questions around timing and need and budget and so on and so on. And some of those questions might be, hey, if you like what you see today or, hey, you know, where are you guys in terms of growth and so on and so on. You're trying to uncover timing, budget and need. More often than not, the person you're talking to, the client or the prospect will tell you, yeah, if I like what I see today, I, I feel comfortable moving forward. So now you've got this little checkbox on your qualifying list. The client told me that if they like what I have to say, then they're gonna keep moving forward with me. Great, I feel good about that checkbox. And then something happens at the end of the call where you don't make the sale and you might feel like, hmm, let me call them out. Well, that is quite possibly the worst thing you could do to anybody and expect them to give you a credit card after. So again, they told you in the beginning of the call, yeah, I would do something with you guys if I felt good about it. But then at the end of the call or at the end of the sales process, they say, yeah, let me think about it or let me run it by some people or you know, insert excuse here. And you respond with, well, you told me when we first started talking that if you liked what you saw, then you'd feel comfortable moving forward today. What, what's going on? Now, in your mind, what you're probably expecting the client to say is, 
you know what? You're right. You caught me. I lied to you. But has that ever happened? What you're really saying is you're a liar and you told me in the beginning of this call that you would pull the trigger if you liked it and now you're lying to me. And that's unfortunately what is being conveyed from person A to person B. Try to remind yourself again that if a person is not making a transaction with you, it's not because they intended to lie to you or they intended to attack you in any way. It's because somewhere between point A and point B, they don't feel comfortable moving forward with your product. So just go ahead and own that. And again, just like in our first scenario, just say, it sounds like I didn't do a good enough job of showing you what it is that you needed to see. But to say the words, you told me earlier that you would move forward if you liked it, is the same as saying, you're a liar. And that's just not a good relationship to have with someone ever. I don't think I've ever heard a salesperson say those words and then the client respond with, you know what, you're right, you caught me, let's do this. It just never happens. Two tips for you today, they'll take you a very long way, they require a lot of ownership, but you can do it.